This is Radar for On The Radar Entertain Blog, coming to another edition of MLB Observations for the hot stove offseason of the 2021 season. This is week four. So Jordan Lupolo got traded to the Dimebacks with only Dave Peralta and Trench and three infielders and Pavin Smith, Cattell Marte, and Dalton Varsho getting outfield at bats. This guy will definitely, Lupolo, get a lot of bats because he's a natural born center fielder. The Astros signed Hector Neres to a two-year deal. The Phillies' best relief pitcher left him and it helped the Astros solidify that bullpen. Blue Jays signed Jimmy Garcia to a two-year deal, and he was pretty good down the stretch. So good moves to, to help the bullpen for those moves. Mets signed both Mark Canna, Starling Marte, and Max Scherzer after last week signing Eduardo Escobar. Canna is a natural-born first baseman. The A's then continue to play him in center field when he's not really an outfielder to begin with. Then they played him in right field. Problem for the Mets, you got Dominic Smith in left, and Brandon Nimble is a below-average defender in center field. So Cannon would probably get in a lot of the bats in right field because Pete Alonso's entrenched at first base. Starling Marte, though, is probably going to get the bats in center field and Cannon's going to play right field and that will make Nimmo a bench player or they'll do some sort of si- situ- platoon situation because I'm not sure really how good Mark Canna is as an everyday player. In the National League, it'll be good for him to be a pinch hitter, things like that. Max Scherzer, three years a lot for guys in his late 30s. But if he's healthy to go with the ground, that's a good one-two punch. So the Mets are signing a lot of guys in their 30s at uh, over 30, so we'll see how that goes. The Rays signed Corey Kluber. He's basically replacing what Michael Walker was, an injury-prone starting veteran pitcher. We'll see how that goes. Mariners traded two prospects to get Adam Frazier, which will solidify second base because that seemed to be an issue for them, despite the fact that Tim Lope shed long. And a few other guys who were natural born second basemen, they wasted time with them playing the outfield. So he'll hopefully just stay at second base and they won't move him all around. Buxton signed a seven year extension, which is good for him because the man can't stay healthy. But for the Twins, that means they have at least center field solidified. The problem is, as I said, he can't stay healthy. So we'll see where that goes. Marcus Simeon and Corey Seeger and Cole Calhoun. And Jonathan Gray all signed. So Cole Calhoun's a one-year deal. He wasn't the most healthy with the Dimebacks. But they don't really have a right fielder, the Rangers, so that works out. The thing is, they made a Zanacon Vallejo a shortstop this season. Moved Nick Solak from the outfield to the second base. And they were going to play like David Dahl or Gallo in center field. And it was just like, what are you going to do? Now you have three shortstops. So most likely, they can move Kana Vallejo back to third base, play Seager as shortstop, and continue to have Simeon play second base because he's not the world's greatest shortstop. It's just the the 10 years for Seager. I know he's under 30, but that's a long time for a guy. And Simeon, too. It's like Simeon is not, you know, the world's greatest player defensively, all this other stuff that I'm just like, why in the world is he's getting this long-term deal, seven years, man? So combine 17 years with the two guys. And then Jonathan Gray. He's always been the Rockies' best pitcher, let's say, but has he really? So it's like he's going to have ups and downs, and he's not really an ace and you're trying to win, so the Rangers really don't have any pitching. So that's the only thing they got. And Phil Nevin, the former Yankees coach and former major leaguer, has joined the Angels as a third base coach. Avi Garcia is on a 4 of the Marlins, so it's not going to be one of those signed for one or two years in trade. They're sticking with him long term. Uh, uh, Kevin Gaussman signed with the Blue Jays for four years. That rotation that has the young guy Manoa and Ryu and Barrios and Ross Stripling, that's going to be a good rotation. They could definitely be a playoff team. Angel signed Mike Lorenz in a one-year deal to pair with Syndergaard. Yeah, they don't have the same rotation they have had in the years. Like, It's still going to be Otani's going to have to rely on him because the other two guys don't stay healthy. Lorenzo Lee, Lorenzo at least get a chance to start. Radley Haddad has been joining the Pirates MLB coordinator, whoever that is. The Mariners signed Robbie Ray to a five-year deal. Now, Robbie Ray won the Cy Young this year. We can question if he really deserved it or not. You want to go into that debate, but here's the thing. He's had off years, and he's had good years. That's not the type of guy you sign a five years and expect him to be your eighth when Kasuksi is a free agent. Like, this rotation is not so amazing. It's got Dunn and Sheffield, but... Eh. Marco Gonzalez, like, that's not the world's greatest rotation, so they don't know what they're going to be getting out of him. And then Marcelo Zuna gets a 20-game suspension because they're not sure what to do with domestic violence. That's fine. And then in baseball, interestingly, Will Meyer has been sued for 64000 by a North Carolina country club. It's that basically problems with a previous golf club, which 
which included booking, tea times due to too much demand. They went to find a new course and they joined in April of 2020. This was during the height of the pandemic when, you know, people were doing all this golf and there was all these issues on them suing him, them suing them because of things that he did wrong. But it's interesting to see that, you know, a golf club is trying to sue a major leaguer in Will Myers. And uh, Red Sox and Ramos Garcia's minor league deal. They just traded Tucker Barnard, so there's definitely room for catching. He never got the chance to even back up in San Francisco for Buster Posey, the prospect, and he played in Oakland recently. So I'll give him an opportunity to maybe make the team there. And Jacob Stalin, speaking of backup catchers, the Pirates cashed in on him winning a gold glove by trading him to the Marlins for Zach Thompson and two prospects. The Marlins, they got Alex Jackson at a trade, and they also got a Faro a few years back for JT Romuto. So you're just like, what are you doing? Now, obviously, Jorge Faro then got traded to San Diego, but San Diego is Austin Nolan and Victor Caratini. So it's like, again, going from one team that has three catchers to another two is just, I don't think he's worth two prospects and a pitcher. He's a glorified backup. He used to be the third stringer and then the backup and then started because they had no other choice. We'll see how that goes. The Nationals re-signed Luis Avila on a minor league deal. That's organizational depth. The Rays signed Brooks Rally to a two-year major league deal. I didn't know he was that great to get a two-year deal. Braves have signed Darren O'Day on a minor league deal. He goes back to pitching for them. Blue Jays signed, re-signed David Phelps to a minor league deal. Who, when healthy, is good. Jose DeLone never looked at potential. Casey Lawrence. Malik Smith would be a good fourth outfielder. And then three other guys. Tigers, though, 9 10 Matt Boyd surprised me because he has been their best pitcher. I don't care about... You know, Turnbull and Mize, these prospects that come up recently, he's been your best pitcher. And, and Michael Fulmer is still in the bullpen still, so it's not like a great rotation there. Then the Phillies acquire Yoan Lopez as a reliever because they're just trying to fix that bullpen. But then Roman Quinn, the only natural one center fielder you have, eh, let's get rid of him. Grayson Griner became a free agent. He's definitely going to get a minor league deal as a backup catcher. Pirates defense, Stephen Brault, one of the only starting pitchers I've heard of. Which, again, makes no sense because they don't really have a lot of starting pitching. Kirby Yates, who missed all of last year, sent a two-year deal with the Braves. If he's healthy, that's an if. Coming off Tommy John or what surgery, all these year-long surgeries, is that they'll actually have a closer, which will be good for them. It's two years, so if he's not starting the season right away, they still got him. Daniel Hudson went from San Diego to L.A., helped out the Dodgers, who lost Corey Knebel, so that's a good idea there. Carlos Cobbs went from Anaheim to San Francisco and got a two-year deal. I really don't know... How good Alice Cobb still is, because Anaheim was not great last year. But the, the the Giants needed to replace at least the body of Kevin Gosman. I don't know if it's going to replace his talent, but still. Pirates DFA, Colin Moran. I understand the dude hasn't been healthy. And they got, they've got they had a lot of corner infielders and outfielders, so it's just not working out. Brewer signed this Brett Sullivan to major league deal. I've never heard of him. It's surprising for a guy who never played in the minor league. They're in the majors whatsoever. Let's sign a major league deal. Bias on a six-year deal with the Tigers. Again. A little bit overrated, a little bit like, yeah, let's sign these guys for more than five years. It's not really the best. The Tigers have Willie Castro. Don't know why they just can't play them. So it's another story there. And then Chris Giddens and Cody Ponce going to Japan. Makes sense. Chris Giddens is more of a quad A player. Pirates signed Jared Alcoff to minor league deal. If he's healthy, they can always flip him. Jan Gomes signed a two-year deal to be the Wilson Contreras' backup. Surprise. There are some teams like the Indians, just for example, that I'm like, Maybe, or even the Mariners, maybe they need an actual starting catcher. Young Gomes has been a starting catcher. That would make sense, but of course, they didn't you know what he went out to him. The Cubs signed him to Junior Jill. The White Sox needed a good backup. I don't know what's going on there. Orioles Cup, Bruce Crispy, the right handed pitcher. Orlando Arcia, who was traded to the Braves from the Brewers, barely played in the major leagues until like the second half of the season, and then they're playing in the outfield, even though he's an infielder. He's had a two year deal to stay with them, so that makes sense. They liked what they saw. Cubs also cleared up Clint Frazier for one year. Outside of Jason Hayward being paying all the money and Ian Happ, they have no set outfielders in particular besides those two guys. So he's a chance to say, hey, I'm healthy. I can play, you know. Brian Stickers' 2024 option was picked up. No-brainer. White Sox re signed super utility man Leora Garcia. No-brainer. He plays everywhere. Twins get Trevor McGill back, who pitched for them before, but they outright Jay Cave, who would be very valuable because Buxton never stays healthy. But no, sorry. Nationals came Lucius Fox, not to be confused with Batman's tech guy. Marlins have finally said goodbye to Lewis Princeton, who's never been able to hit. He's basically a failed prospect, the bust in that Yelich trade. So might as well say goodbye if you don't need him on the roster. Orioles signed Rude out of door. They don't really have a set entire infield outside of first base, so he's definitely could hit. 
Joey Wendell, though, got traded to Miami. Now, Miami, they're like, let's give a bunch of prospects for backup catcher Jacob Stallings, a backup utility man, Joey Wendell. Joey Wendell made him to the altar team this year because his manager was in charge of the team, but he's a utility guy. Like, like there's no way that these guys are worse prospects. But let's see what the Marlins do to get more utility guys and not play the guys who are young. Red Sox signed Christian Stewart and Rob Refshider minor league deals. Stewart is a quad A like outfielder, so that's where he belongs. Rob Refshider is a super utility guy, so the Red Sox can definitely use that. Gary Sanchez got tendered a contract, so he's going to be saying with the Yankees, Brewers, and non-tendered Vogelbach. That makes sense. If they still, you know, have Rowdy Telez and they still got Keston here, they don't obviously need another first baseman. Braves not tender Richard Rodriguez which is surprising because they traded a couple minor prospects to the Pirates to get him and he was his hot commodity at the deadline. So I don't know. Somebody will definitely pick him up. Yankees side on Zaparaz away from the Mets. They don't have a set infield right now with the way that the whole Glaber tour situation. So he'll become valuable as a utility guy. National Science is Arnanis to one year deal, which is good because they don't have a set infield except for Josh Bell after trading away some of their guys. So that's a good move for them because he's solid. Ray Seal Glaciers, who the Reds traded because they didn't want to pay him, had a rebound season with the Angels. Well, the Angels re signed him to a four year deal. So at least the Angels got him and Aaron Loop in the bullpen. So that's at least somebody. Padres, as I mentioned, Jorge Faro, a basically a top prospect traded for one of the best catchers in baseball, JT Ramuto. All the Marlins get was a player to be named later a cash. I don't really get that. I think the guy is good enough to be an everyday catcher. The Rockies signed J.D. Hammer to a minor league deal. That's just organizational depth. The Diamondbacks signed Jake Hager minor league deal. Organizational depth. Giants signed Trevin Hildenberger to a minor league deal. He could definitely play a role in their bullpen. Richard Reyes signed a minor league deal with the Nationals that I mentioned with Cesar Hernandez. They don't really have a set infield, so you might as well just put the bodies there. Mariners signed a four-year set to him. This Andres Munoz dude, never heard of him. Paxton joining Michael Walker in Boston. Again, these dudes can't stay healthy. Missed most of the year. I don't, I don't get it. They're replacing Garrett Richards and Martin Perez. All these dudes who can't stay healthy. Then, Henry Ramos, who got his chance to play in the major leagues towards the end of the season with the Diamondbacks, is going to the KBO. Makes sense because he doesn't want to be in the minor leagues. Blue Jays Cup, Brevlik, Valeria, a utility player, I guess. They decided they don't need him on the roster. Pilecki voter arbitration, so he's staying with the Red Sox as the backup. Tigers have signed Jacob Barnes, minor league deal. To a major, major league deal, like that would be a good enough reliever for them. Phillies signed Knebel, as I mentioned, that just lost him. Phillies are desperate for answers in the bullpen. So Knebel, a former closer, if he's healthy, can maybe help that out. Diamondback signed Mark Melanson, two year deal. They're not really going anywhere, but having a closer to know that games kick. Shut out because Melanson had a good year, should have won reliever of the year. And as I said, if they're out of it, they can always trade him to a team and say, hey, he's got one more year left. He's having such a great year. Jacoby Jones signed a minor league deal with the Royals. My, Michael A. Taylor and Ben Attending are like gold glove winners. Potentially could have won silver sluggers at their positions. There's room, so he'll get a chance to play there. He could also play third base, his natural born position. And then... Cervelli has been announced he'll be the new catching striker of the San Diego Padres, replacing Rod Barajas, another former major league catcher. Cervelli retired due to concussion, so it's nice that he's getting back into coaching. Chris Taylor, utility player, got this massive four-year deal to stay with the Dodgers, but the Dodgers are like, we lost Corey Seager, so I assume that Trey Turner is going to play shortstop, and Gavin Lux will probably play second base, so Chris Taylor will go back to being a super utility. Padres signed Luis Garcia, who had a rebound major league season with the Cardinals. That's good for their bullpen to lose a guy like Melanson. Austin Slater's re-signed with the Giants. They like his bat. Cubs re-signed on Michael Armacillo because, again, they got no guaranteed outfield. He's a good backup. Dodgers DFA shelled the news, the utility player. Philly signed Yoan Camargo. I'm surprised. The Braves kind of, kind of like threw him to the side the past year or two, but the Phillies, you know, need some utility players, so it's not bad. Twins signed Danny Columbe and Jacob Fari to my deal. I feel like with the way that their rotation is, Jacob Fari's going to probably start. Padres signed Nick Martinez to a four-year deal after he pitched for Team USA this year and pitched overseas. I don't really know the Padres keep loading up on these long-term deals or trading for starting pitchers because they can't figure out their own. So let's see how that goes for guys who pitched in the major leagues in a while. Cleveland signed Eniel De Los Santos, a minor league deal. Def Angels DFA, Sam Selman. The Padres signed Roberto Suarez to a one-year deal. Ah, the Padres, I mean. It's like, I don't know him. Most people are not going to know this Nick Martinez guy. We'll see what they're doing there. Luis Garcia, most people are not going to know him. Rich Hill going to the Red Sox. Okay, so Rich Hill... Michael Walker and James Baxton. The Red Sox are hoping that between the one of them, they could be healthy because Garrett Richards, Martin Perez, 
and Eduardo Rodriguez are not back, but then your best pitcher is Chris Dale and Eovaldi. I don't really know there. Uh, Kansas City signed this Taylor Clark to one-year deal, the former Diamondbacks reliever. They just need body. Twins signed Dylan Bundy, so that's more of a body deal because he hasn't been that great. Twins just don't, don't have enough pitching. The Cubs signed Marcus Stroman to three years, and I'm like, why is Stroman going there? I thought he wants to win. Cubs are not going anywhere. Hey, three years means I don't know if the Cubs are going to look to trade him anytime soon because they're going to need the innings pitch. Jordan Lyles on a one-year deal with the Orioles. If he's healthy, the Orioles will just flip him. Jordan Lyles has been flipped before the deadline. Red Sign and Andrew Knapp to my ideal, as I mentioned with Ramos Garcia. They need catching because they lost Barnhart. They got this Brandon Bailey, Trey Wingenner, Trey Amgur, and Aaron Cordova signed a minor league deal. The Rangers signed Yoho Paza and David Garcia and Mirabel Severe and Hayes Takuna minor league deal. And then the major league portion of the Rule 5 draft was canceled. So that thing where everybody's like scram scrambling to put players on the roster, you know, that's going to be the issue because they're not going to have the ability to do that. So I don't know. It's because they put officially baseballs on a lockout. The owners agreed to that. So pretty much everything else, like the A's Green deals with Pinder and Kemp to stay to avoid arbitration. Ben Gamble staying with the Pirates. Andrew Stevenson, the outfielder, staying with the Nationals. And then other guys who become free agents from being non-tendered. Or LeCastro, even the rest I paid them off waiver. The Rangers, even though they just got Billy McKinney, and they, as I mentioned, they re-signed this Garcia and Plazo. They also outrighted DJ Peters, Royals tender Richard Lovelady, because he's going to miss most of the season, so that makes sense. Twins say goodbye to Manaya, but McGill and Colombe, they're going to just stay with those type of guys. And Phil Gosselin was tendered by the Angels, because that makes sense, because he's a utility guy. They don't really need him. And Cardinals... They said goodbye to Jose Rondon, which makes sense. The Giants did that to Lu outfielder Luis Gonzalez, a former White Sox outfielder. Sam Dulapane and Joe Palumbo. Phillies did that to Southpaw Kyle Dowey. Padres said goodbye to Jose Castillo. Trey Wingenner, who I just announced signed a my deal with some team. Mass John would never stay healthy. Cubs do Jason Adams, because most people never heard of him. And I mentioned they re signed Hermosillo, who's non tender. Mets non tender Mark Payton. Reds of tender Baron Bailey. Nationals of non tender Wander Suaro. Ryan Harper and Mike Ford. Mike Ford was so valuable with the Yankees. I don't know what happened. And Suaro hasn't been good in a while. Mets said goodbye to Steven Negoshik. Makes no sense. I mentioned Tyler Clark was on the Royals because the Diamondbacks not tendered him. Dime Dodgers have tendered Andrew, Vol Andrew Vasquez. Pirates have said goodbye to Brolton. Cool, the only starting pitchers you've heard of. And the Mets also said goodbye to longtime pitcher Robert Gazelman. So, yeah, the owners officially called for a lockout, so there's going to be no major league moves. That's why a lot of these moves were so many between this week and this week. They're just trying to get in before the CBA runs out. So I don't know if I'm going to be recording any baseball videos in the next couple of weeks if, you know, there is no baseball news to report on. Same thing with my podcast. So just keep an eye out on that. Thanks for listening to a, another edition of 2021 MLB Hot Stove Off-Season Edition, week number four. For On the Radar Entertain Blog, I'm Radar. See you guys next time.